I'd promised a while back that I would post a list of the dwarves and their activities after an update, but I neglected the follow through. So here it is, better late than never. Bob the Third is the mayor. Rick's son is a miner. Sewermancer is a miner. Manic Mole is a miner. Idols is a miner. The Deadly Hume is a miner. Drasserin is a woodworker. Tower of Oil is a woodworker. Skaw is a carpenter. Murder Mystery is a carpenter. Titty Turtler is a carpenter. Hella Turtle is an engraver. Goose Creek is a mason. That Guy Bob is an animal caretaker. Gary Khan is an animal trainer. Hankor is a furnace operator. I Am Lemon is a furnace operator. Gold Jaws is a furnace operator. The Strangest Finch is a furnace operator. Callisti is a furnace operator. Out of Print is a furnace operator. Eumenides is a weaponsmith. Vox Nihili is an armorer. Green Intern is a metal crafter. The White Crane is a jeweler. Bobbin Threadbear is a jeweler. Jasimus is a gem cutter. Ilarkol is a gem setter. Bobatron is a craft dwarf. Where Yaman is a wood crafter. Gerblin is a stone crafter. Orange Soda is a stone crafter. Manuel Calavera is a bone carver. Kurish is a weaver. Slan is a glassmaker. White Cloak is a fishery worker. Smuggins is a fishery worker. Spoon Boy is a farmer. Mehoyal is a farmer. A124 is a cheesemaker. Joseph Juan KS is a cook. Mystical Haberdasher is a tanner. Steelian is a planter. Tag Plastic is a mechanic. Dong Attack is a mechanic. Lob of Glob is a siege operator. Skull Buggy is a clerk. Frederick is the dungeon master. Sirocco is a champion. Royal W is a champion. Spermy Smurf is a champion. Swatchester is a champion. Syntax is a champion. Mailman is a champion. Screaming Idiot is a wrestler. Flocks of Mice is a guard. Pumping Lemma is a wrestler. Alias is a wrestler. Firos is an elite wrestler. Tassid is an elite wrestler. Draconel is a recruit. Ultimate Quix is a peasant. 64-bit robot is captain of the guard. Recursive is a peasant. And Deki is a child. Since we're between overseers now, anyone who wishes to post a journal for the dwarf, please do so by all means. If you have a question about moods or stocks or whatever, let me know, and I'll try to get you a screenshot tonight or tomorrow. Or you can download the save and check for yourself, either way is fine. Orange Soda wrote, Diary of Orange Soda, Stone Crafter. Ugh. Manuel might be onto something with those instruments when I think about it, but I've got a better idea. Something that makes a bit more noise, a little more manly in sound. Something that shows how tough and vicious dwarves are through music and song. Orange Soda is making rock instruments. I call it rock music. Sirocco wrote The Journal of Sirocco, fifth entry. Hey, diary. It's been a crazy few months, that's for sure. I am a champion of Syrup Leaf now. It's like a dream come true. I still remember the snowy morning I was recruited as if it were yesterday. Oosh, that's a flashback noise, diary. Royal W stepped into the dining hall and rang the bell until everyone was silent. We need some volunteers for soldiering work. As you all know, we've lost some great dwarves during the battle. Great dwarves. And I know they're going to be big shoes to fill, I do. But I have complete faith in your abilities. I know you all have what it takes to be a real dwarf. Those brave souls who raise their hand now will be tasked with defending this fortress from the darkness, trying to break their way through these stone walls. Speak, dwarves. Who will answer this call? I will, said Tassid, a single tear rolling down his cheek. I will, said Alias from the corner, his head hung, the tragedy of what had happened heavy on his stout shoulders. I will, said Draconel, stepping forward. By my own hands, if necessary, I will protect our domain to the death. Very good, said Royal W, putting a hand on Draconel's shoulders, his voice choked with emotion. But we need one more. One more brave dwarf to keep back the tides of evil. Ooh, oh, me, 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 
Anyone at all, said Royal W. Ooh, me, me, over here, me, anyone, just please raise your hand, said Royal W., looking over the dwarves, a steely glint in his eye. Oh, me, 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 I can do it. You're not looking. Me, 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 me. Royal W. turned to me, suffering mudstone. Sirocco, you're a builder, not a fighter. The last time you killed anything was when you stepped on a fluffy wambler by accident. And if I recall, you spent the next two weeks crying in your room. I love syrup leaf. I've never felt happier in my life than the time I've spent here. I would die to protect it. I swear. Armok, have mercy, Sirocco. You don't fucking love Syrup leaf! It's fucking freezing here! Monsters are trying to eat us alive! Children get snatched from their parents to suffer Armok only knows what, and once more, it's fucking freezing! I'd have called it bracing. Royal W sat down in a chair and buried his face in his palms, and after taking a few deep breaths, he sat back up. Fine. Fine. There's a hammer in the stockpile. Go grab it and meet me in the barracks in 20 minutes. Yay! To Sid prodded Royal W. Can I, uh, unvolunteer? No, you fucking can't. I'm gonna have a drink or 20. No one fucking interrupt me. Whoosh! Poor old Royal. He's still a bit morose about his old soldier friends. I'm quite good at this hammer business, though, diary. I almost can't remember what it's like to build chairs and stuff. <laughs> well, I've gotta go. Can't let the spawn catch me napping now. <laughs> Whoosh! That's me saying goodbye and running off noise this time, diary. Whoosh! Skullbuggy wrote, Wait, my dwarf's a record keeper? And I thought he was just a clerk slash manager. Entry 4, Moonstone, the fifth year. I've been observing Jasimus's behavior rather closely for these last few minutes. He's been walking to and fro, muttering every once in a while, trying his hardest to drive away the invisible demons that plague him so. He shakes with fear, his worried steps haunting the corridors every waking moment. He's most definitely unwell. Yes, with the cold, dark winter months comes a strange air of silent tumult, all dwarves silently hoping that death skips over them. I myself have been living in the candlelight at almost every hour. I may as well be the first to admit that I am afraid of the dark. The worst part of this whole ordeal is that I am starting to hear voices at night as well. I fear that I may be succumbing to the very same insanity that is overtaking the Overseer. Entry 4? Moonstone, the fifth year. Never mind. I was just screaming idiot crying into his ale. Second of Opal, the fifth year. The miners have been at it for weeks. I believe that I might as well do my part with the economy by smelting a bit. After all, managing isn't going to put food in my mouth. Then again, not much does around here. Entry, 30th of Obsidian, the fifth year. Jasimus is unwell in the worst way. He's become pallid and shaky, and his beard has grown ragged un and unkempt. I fear that he may be sick in the head. He's given the reins to Frederick, though I hope he hasn't passed all of his leaderly traits to him as well. 64-bit robot posted, Wait, how could a merchant be crushed by the drawbridge, uh, uh, the dwarven atom smasher? I could have sworn it ends up entirely on air when it goes down, unless I've forgotten another way for it to smash? I forgot to answer this question. It ends up entirely on air when it goes down, except for one square. You know the golden wall that you had built on the level below? The merchant was standing on that wall when it connected to the hill. He was standing here. As a bonus, we even got an engraving of it somewhere in the fort. I took a screenshot, but ended up not including the engraving in the story. Ozon Gas Shows, The Depressed Proliferations. Engraved on the wall is a superiorly designed image of Mistem Rod Eyes, the dwarf, by Hella Turtle Athelgirith. Mistem Rod Eyes is cringing. The artwork relates to the crushing of the dwarf Mistem Rod Eyes under a drawbridge in Syrup Leaf in the early autumn of 142. Chance the Second wrote, A valiant mace dwarf tooled up and ready to crack heads. Relic low boots are the season's fashion must. 
Chance the Second wrote, Also, my rendition of The Spawn. Chance the Second wrote, I look forward to the day Syrup Leaf gets a chance to welcome back one of its own. Have fun storming the castle, Flat Banana. Darren wrote, I'm on a roll here. This is fun. St. Einketh Singed Banner's Art of Kicking the Shit Out of Other Armies. Common human translation with original dwarven besides it. When in doubt, fuck the world. Not included in human compilations. All warfare is based on deception. Lie hard, so they die harder. A leader leads by example, not by force. Showing off is more effective than 100 drills. Pretend inferiority. Encourage arrogance. Wait until the elves are inside the depot before throwing the lever. If your opponent is cleric, aggravate them. Make shit out of trees and squirrel leather, then sell it to the elves. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. Human armor sells the best. A clever fighter is not just who wins, but who wins with ease. The gods are watching. Put on a show. The victorious strategist only seeks battle after the victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat first fights and afterwards looks for victory. If the diplomat shows up in full adamantine dress, surrender. In war, avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Stay the fuck away from the crossbows and beat the shit out of the draftees. We cannot enter into alliances until we are acquainted with the designs of our neighbors. If the locals complain, turn their villages into obsidian farms. Throw your soldiers into positions whence there is no escape, and they will prefer death to flight. If they will face death, there is nothing that they may not achieve. No difference in translation. To capture the enemy's entire army is better than to destroy it. To take intact a regiment, a company, or a squad is better than to destroy them. Torture chambers are a great way to train new recruits. The Deadly Hume wrote, Dear Mama and Dada, I hope this note reaches you, but I'm somewhat doubtful that it will, as caravans arrive but often don't get to leave. The caravaneer's timing and preparation always leaves a bit to be desired. Not enough accompanying soldiers, particularly when those stupid elves come. Don't those tree huggers know it's dangerous out there? Syrup Leaf is certainly an interesting place, kind of cold though. I've spent most of my time here upholding the family traditions and so rarely have time to write. For now, I have a few spare moments to quaff an ale and reflect, as we've been ordered to down tools since we found... well, perhaps it's better I don't say at this point. Suffice to say that Sir Leaf may be needing a new throne room soon, as is tradition of the Mountain Homes. Take a guess who's probably going to have to bloody dig it out. At least it would make a change from digging out tombs instead. In any case, I suppose it's a good thing that my labors have kept me far from the surface. No doubt you would have started to hear other rumors and reports of the bravery of the soldiers here, as they fended off the scourge of the spawn that has attempted to raid our fortress year after year. They're very much as horrific looking as you may have imagined, with an axe wounds on their face, almost unspeakable. I have not seen one myself, but I have seen the engravings. This latest onslaught was nothing less than a tragedy and yet with their lives they bought the safety of the settlement for another season at least. All of the hideous invaders were slain, including their leader. Royal W was the only survivor amongst our soldiers, so new recruits have already gone into training. It is perhaps fortunate for me that my mining skills are considered too important for me to be conscripted. I only hope that we're sufficiently prepared for the next threat from wherever that emerges. I suppose I'm Keth would be amused by it all at least. To give the Fallen a fitting resting place, I had to hastily dig out a new set of tombs. As I dug, the White Crane hastily and yet skillfully smoothed the walls of the crypt, after which Hella Turtle documented the awful battle in stone. Fitting tribute by great crafts dwarves for great warriors. Whether we lived in more civilized climes so that their art would be turned to less ominous subjects. Something with cats would be neat. Frederick has taken over from Jasmus, who's retired from Overseer for a much needed rest with what he's had to endure. What is to happen next, I'm not sure, but I know I will be kept busy. But for now, I write this note to let you know that I'm still swinging the pick the way that you taught me, Dada, and that I still try to honor Imketh as you would wish me, Mama. Though, sometimes it's hard. With love, the Deadly Hume, Syrup Leaf, 3rd of Granite, 143.
Teddy Bear wrote, recovered from the journal of Teddy Bear, formerly Where Your Man. Nobody has noticed me, a simple wood crafter. I make your tables, I make your chairs, so that you can rest after killing spawn or crafting treasures. One of these days, they will notice me. The name Teddy Bear will go down in Sir Blue's history alongside such greats as... Uh, oh god, why don't I know anyone's name? Nobody even talks to me! I'm a simple woods dwarf. I sure Mick is gonna have a wobbly leg. That'll show him. First of Granite, 143. Having left Frederick in charge of overseeing the fortress, I look over the fortress inventory records that have been prepared by Skullbuggy. In my new role as Fortress Horde Master, the responsibility for maintaining such records now falls to me. Perhaps reading through all the numbers a sixth or seventh time will finally help me get to sleep. Perhaps not. I think I can hear the demon chuckling again. Chance the Second wrote, Journal 1, Granite 2. As I carve this entry into this felsite tablet, my hands shake, both its excitement and terror. Excitement of new discovery and terror at the ramifications of this discovery. This past fortnight has confirmed the truth of the legends of the fell holistic detective and the dread creature's spawn. For years have I dismissed such stories as mere myth suitable to scare children or, or lies told by drunkards deep in their cups. Unfortunately, I must now accept them as fact. Seven days previous, a group of woodcutters whom I have often prevailed upon to indulge my hobby of studying the inner workings of various creatures they happen across in the course of their work, deposited the corpse of a creature they claimed accosted them in the woodland far to the north of the mountain home. At first, I was horrified and denounced them in as murderers, for the corpse they had drugged before me resembled nothing so much as the mutilated remains of a dwarf. Yet, upon closer inspection, and a calming tug from the silver flask of dwarven rum in my breast pocket, I realized that no manner of work with fist or hatchet could account for this horrible, misshapen thing before me. I ordered the corpse brought to my cold cellar before the bone carvers caught wind of its arrival. These stone-cursed bone carvers would not be making flutes of this fine. Locked within my study, I carefully dissected the creature's remains, or what was left of it, I should say. Let me clarify. The woodcutters claimed that they encountered the creature dragging itself along with its arms, trailing various vitrian organs behind. So, mistaking it for a gravely wounded dwarf, they attempted to render aid. Upon approaching, however, the creature lashed at them with its clawed arm, scored a deep gash along one dwarf's thigh. In a rage, the injured dwarf removed the offending creature's appendage with his axe. Perhaps finally at its limits, the creature let out a terrible shriek and collapsed. The woodcutters observed that a strange glowing deep within the creature's chest faded out with that last death cry. See note and attached engraving. I end this entry with a few initial observances pertaining to the dissection and study of this creature. This spawn. Most apparent is the vertical gash running ventrally from mid-navel to just under the creature's nasal passage. This wounding corresponds to those of the legendary holistic detective, and appear to not have been related to the creature's death. Indeed, this monster shares many characteristics with other examples of undead creatures I've examined. Yet, where normal zombified dwarves or humans are merely reanimated corpses, much of this creature's nature has become transfigured by some unnatural force. Examples for this include the monster's freakishly regrown claws and caramelized blood, where hands should be, the creature has apparently partially regrown horrible, claw-like talons. Explaining the woodsman's claims that the creature did not bleed is that all the blood in the creature has caramelized, as if exposed to great heat, rendering it too thick to move through the body. Within the chest cavity, I found a fist-sized obsidian stone, warm to the touch. I speculate that this stone was the strange glow the woodcutters mentioned. This will require much more study. I will link all of my findings in this journal for future Dwarven scholars. Sirocco wrote, well, while we're waiting. The Journal of Sirocco, 6th entry. Hey, diary, I had a really satisfying sparring session lately. Usually when I spar, it's all a bit, you know, same old, same old, but this time. I think I've really made some progress. It seems like it was only yesterday, but it was really this morning. 
It's a bit weird if you ask me. I walked into the barracks for the first training session of the new year. It's the first of granite already. Hey, all the months are named after rocks. I can't believe I never noticed before. <laughs> Whoops. I engraved a one instead of an exclamation mark. Blame it on this old worn chisel of my diary. Anyway, I walked into the barracks and saw my good old buddy to Sid. Hi to Sid. You don't Pronounce it with a capital T, Sirocco. How many times? He grumbled. Sorry to Sid. I won't make the same mistake twice. Hey, you want to spar? I've just sharpened my hammer. To Sid's expression was one of apprehension, but I like to think he was confusing it with enthusiasm. They're both very long words after all. I, I don't think you're supposed to do that, he said. Maybe we could spar later. I, I haven't been given a weapon yet. On guard, touchy, I cried, leaping forward and swinging my hammer at the unsuspecting foe. You gotta take him unawares, diary. The element of surprise is ten times as terrible as an adamantine sword. That's what they said at Boat Murdered. I, I, I think it was element. Might have been something else, actually. <laughs> this is a memory of mine. <laughs> By the beard of Enketh, are you trying to kill me? Shouted to Sid, who'd managed to dodge my blow. Grr. We're just sparring. It's not real to Sid. I laughed and hefted my hammer for another counteroffensive, the sharpened spike glinting in the torchlight. I swung my hammer with all my strength, and to Sid dived into the corner. He's just like a snake man. <laughs> and my hammer smashed a bed to splinters instead. Oopsies. <laughs> you won't tell Frederick about that, will ya? I asked, swinging Patsy towards to sit again. Oh, oh, did I forget to say that? I named my hammer Patsy. You're insane, to Sid screamed, just managing to duck my swing as it bust a new window in the barracks wall. You don't think anyone will mind, right, Diary? I've tried to hide it with some ropery cloth with wall written on it, but I think the others are getting suspicious. Help, dear Armak, someone help me. Anyone, to Sid cried fleeing through the door. He's a really good actor, Diary. For a moment, I honestly think he was afraid of me. It's really great practice for when I have to fight the spawn. I just know they'll run away at the sight of Patsy. She's a little more violent than I am. <laughs> I chased him through the door, but Flux and Mice tripped me up and took me to the jail to cool off for the night. That'll be easy here in Syrup Leaf Diary. <laughs> that to Sid is one tactical player, but I wish he would hurry up and explain we weren't really fighting. I'm running out of space on this wall and the chain's chafing a little on my leg. I hope I'm not allergic. Oh well, it's a new experience and I'll get some cool dwarf cred after spending some time on the inside, so it's not all bad. Can't wait to get out of here and spar with Tassid a bit more. I think we're really gonna be really good friends. Bye, diary. Bye bye. Uh, my, um, my apologies to Tassid.